Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Elder Charles Bailey and on behalf of our senior pastor, I greet you in the name of the Lord. Tonight's Bible study is taken from the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Colossians chapter two, verses 20 and continuing to chapter three, verse 14. The title of our lesson tonight is Dying to the Flesh, Living in the Spirit. In our lesson tonight, the Apostle Paul addresses our freedom from the Mosaic law and the pretense of an outward manifestation of religious conduct. This epistle, which was one of three epistles written by Paul, while confined in a Roman jail. The other two epistles are Ephesians and Philippians, and they are called the prison epistles. Though confined, the apostle Paul continued to instruct and care for those of the faith in Jesus Christ. Paul's biggest challenge, however, in this epistle is that of the Gnostics and the Judaizers who had infiltrated the church in Colossae. The Gnostics combined philosophic thinking, superstition, rites and rituals, which veered from the teachings of Christ. Ideas common to the Gnostics were salvation by knowledge, that those who obtained the secrets and mysteries were more advanced Christians than others. The Gnostics also believed in dualism, that everything spiritual is by nature pure and everything material is by nature evil. The Gnostics pushed a philosophy that intellectualism and individualism, which cultivated an elite status for whom alone salvation was possible. And as such, they looked down on those who lacked this false superior knowledge. The Judaizers were those who adopted Jewish religious practices and sought to influence others to do the same. This was addressed in the Jerusalem Council, which is reported in the book of Acts chapter 15, which came against the Judaizers, teaching that unless one was circumcised in the tradition of Moses, they could not be saved. The apostle Peter and the elders stated that the Gentiles had received the Holy Spirit just as the Jews had. And there was no distinction between Jews or the Gentiles. And they were purified thus by their hearts, their faith. The council further stated that Jesus Christ was the means of salvation. The council concluded with this statement. Therefore, judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who are turning to God. So then we see what the Apostle Paul was up against in writing this letter to the church in Colossae. But before we begin, let us pray. Father God, we have come to study your word. Instruct us by the guidance of your Holy Spirit to understand and apply your words to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn with me now in your Bibles to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 20 to 23. And that text reads, Therefore, if you've died with Christ to the elementary principles of the word, why, as if you are living in the world, do you subject yourself to legalistic rules? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. These are all to perish with use and are aligned with the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have a show of wisdom and self-imposed worship and humility and neglecting the body, but are worthless against the indulgence of the flesh. At the very beginning of our scripture text in verses 20 through 23, the apostle Paul addresses the false teachings of the Gnostics and Judaizers. 
He states in verse 20, if you're dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why are you subject to Mosaic ordinances as the regulations? These ordinances were the very thing that divided the Jew from the Gentiles. These things stood against one another. These laws and ordinance could not save us from sinning against God. No one could keep the law. We were all sinners in need of a savior. In fact, we read in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, that the law was not given for a righteous person, but for the lawless and the disobedient. In Romans chapter 3, verse 19, we read, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and all the world may become accountable unto God. Therefore, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in God's sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. This righteousness of God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all and upon all who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The apostle Paul also addressed in in this letter, divisiveness. In Romans chapter 14, he said, we are not to judge one another. How can we judge another man's servant? To his own master, he will stand or fall. One man judges one day above another and another judges one day alike. He who observes the day does so as unto the Lord. And he who does not as unto the Lord. So why do we judge our brothers? Why do we despise our brothers? For Paul says that we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So then each of us shall give an account of himself unto God. The apostle Paul continues in chapter three, verses one through 11 dying to our flesh. Our text reads, if you then are raised with Christ, desire those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of earth, for you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then you shall also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death the parts of your earthly nature, sexual immorality, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. You also once walked in these, when you lived in them. But now you must put away all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie one to another, since you have put off the old nature and its deeds, and have embraced the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge, after him who created it, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, senaten, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Here, the apostle Paul states to have a new mindset or an intent on living a godly lifestyle, to put to death our fleshly nature, to deprive our flesh or our carnal nature and the power it once had over us. Our Christian walk is not a sprint, but a marathon. It is a day by day process. 
We are to take arms against the thoughts in our minds that are contrary to the word of God. Sin always begins with a thought, which is followed by an action. And as a result, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Paul continues in verse eight, put away anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language, and lying. These things do not glorify our heavenly father, nor Christ who died to free us from the powers of wickedness. Finally, in verses 14, 12 through 14 of our text, Paul addresses our new nature in Christ. He says, so embrace as the elect of God, holy and beloved, a spirit of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. Bear with one another and forgive one another. If anyone has a quarrel against anyone, even as Christ forgave you, you must also do the same. And above all these things, embrace love, which is the bond of perfection. Paul identifies almost to the T, the fruit of the Holy Spirit found in Galatians chapter five, verse 22, which states, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. You see, the fruit is rooted in love which Paul says in our text is the bond of perfection. Beloved, let us live a life of love towards God and towards others. Our new nature as Christians must put off Christ's likeness and put on Christ. I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you. God bless and good night.